Good evening. This is All India Radio. I am Abhishek Mukhopadhyay and with me is Renuka with the evening news. The headlines: Relief and rescue operations in full swing in heavy rain affected Kerala. Center assures all help. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh says as a responsible maritime stakeholder India supports consensus based principles and a peaceful open rule based and stable world order Prime Minister Narendra Modi to inaugurate Kushinagar International Airport on Wednesday Civil Aviation Minister Jyoti Raditya Sindhya virtually flags off six routes expanding aerial connectivity in northeast region India and Israel agree to resume negotiations on free trade agreement next month. Over 56.62 lakh metric tons of paddy procured in current Kharif marketing season so far. Over 97 crore 79 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses administered in the country so far. Recovery rate is at 98.12 percent. Former head of Dera Satcha Soda Gurmeet Ram Rahim and four others get life imprisonment. in a 2002 murder case sensex and nifty hit fresh record high and in cricket t20 world cup india take on england in the first warm up match in dubai as india is on the verge of vaccinating 100 crore people against covid-19 all india radio salutes all the doctors nurses and others who made this possible At the same time we caution our listeners that the battle against covid is not yet over. We appeal to our listeners to get fully vaccinated at the earliest and also help others get vaccinated. During the festival season please follow these three simple steps. Wear a face mask, maintain two gaz ki duri for social distancing, focus on hand and face hygiene. For any covid related information and guidance contact national health line numbers 011 2397 8046. and 1075 and now the news in detail relief and rescue operations are in full swing in heavy rain affected kerala our correspondent reports that the death toll in the rain related incidents has risen to 27 in the state our tiruvannathapuram correspondent has filed this report relief and rescue operations are on war footing in kotte midiki and pathanamitta district that are severely hit by landslides and floods As water level in rivers are rising the shutters of Idiki and Idamalayar dam will be open tomorrow morning high alert is issued for people residing in the river side Kerala PSC exams to be held on 21st and 23rd of this month had been postponed opening of colleges had also been postponed to 25th of this month meanwhile med department forecasts less rainfall tomorrow but from Wednesday the showers are likely to intensify Mayusha for AR news from Tiruvannathapuram Prime Minister Narendra Modi spoke to Kerala Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan and discussed the situation in the wake of heavy rain and landslide in the state. In a series of tweets the Prime Minister said, "It is saddening that some people have lost their lives due to heavy rain and landslides in Kerala." He expressed condolences to the bereaved families. The Prime Minister said authorities are working on the ground to assist the injured and affected people. He prayed for everyone's safety and well-being. The Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu has also expressed grief over the loss of lives due to floods in Kerala. In a tweet Mr Naidu said he is deeply distressed and prayed for the safety of those affected by floods. Union Home Minister Amit Shah said that his ministry is continuously monitoring the situation in Kerala. In a tweet Mr Shah said that the central government will provide all possible support to help people in need. Mr Shah informed that the National Disaster Response Force teams have already been sent to assist the rescue operations in the state. Meanwhile, the Med Department has warned that heavy to very heavy rainfall is likely at one or two places in Kerala and Lakshadweep for 3 days from the 20th of this month. Wind speeds reaching 40 to 50 kilometers per hour, thunderstorm and lightning are also likely. Fishermen have been asked not to venture out into the sea during this period. Water from Idukki Reservoir will be released at 11 a.m. tomorrow. Two shutters of the nearby Cheruthoni Dam, part of the Idukki Hydro Project, will be raised 50 cm to release water from the reservoir. This was announced by the Kerala Water Resources Minister Roshi Augustine after a high-level meeting with officials in Idukki this evening. Water from Edam Malaya Dam in Arnakulam district will be released at 6 in the morning. 
Official sources said two shutters of the dam will be lifted a maximum of 80 centimeters, allowing release of water at the rate of 100 cubic meter per second. In Uttarakhand, incessant rain has been experienced across the state since this morning. The upper reaches of Garhwal and Kumau regions also experienced fresh, late, light snowfall today. The meteorological department has forecast heavy to very heavy rain warning in most parts of the state for today and tomorrow. Five rain-related deaths have been reported in the state. More from a Dehradun correspondent. Heavy to very heavy rains have been recorded at more than 20 places in the state, whereas high reaches of Badrinath, Kedarnath, Rupkund, Hemkund, Gunji and Gangotri have also experienced fresh light snowfall today. Heavy rains claim two lives at Selkola in Champawa district, while three people died when a house collapsed in Lansdowne in Pori district. On the other hand, some national highways, including circuit roads connecting villages, were blocked at many places in the state, which are being cleared by the respective district administrations. In view of the inclement weather, 2,000 pilgrims are staying at safer places at Kedarna, where all necessary arrangements have been made for them by the district administration. Meanwhile, Chief Minister Pushkar Singh Dhami directed the district magistrates to give all the reports of rain and roads in the respective districts. With Sanjeev Sundariya's report from Dehradun, this is Nishit Kumar, All India Radio News, Delhi. The News Services Division of All India Radio will bring an exclusive interview with Dr. Mithyanjay Mohapatra, Director General of Indian Meteorological Department on Weather and Climate Science for Society in Spotlight. This can be heard tonight on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.15 p.m. onwards. This program will also be available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate Kushinagar International Airport on October the 20th. Kushinagar is the place where Gautam Buddha attained Mahapari Nirvana. The city is an important part of Buddha circuit and the international airport will prove a game changer in the development of the place. Talking to AIR News, Dr. Nand Ratna, a Buddhist monk from Kushinagar and head priest of Sri Lanka Bodh Vihar, said that followers of Buddhism across the world are very happy with the opening of this airport at Kushinagar and thanked Prime Minister Narendra Modi for this initiative. देश के प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी के द्वारा कुशीनगर अंतर्राष्ट्रीय एयरपोर्ट का उद्घाटन करना बौद्धों के लिए बहुत ही हर्ष की बात है दुनिया में जितने भी बौद्ध धनवाई हैं, उनमें एक खुशी की लहर है क्योंकि कुशीनगर भगवान बुद्ध की पर निर्माण भूमि है इसका दर्शन करना उनका बंधन करना प्रत्येक बौद्ध अनुयायियों की अपनी एक इच्छा होती है ऐसा होना उनके लिए बहुत ही सुलभ हो जाएगा इसलिए बहुत ही वो प्रसन्न हैं और देश के प्रधानमंत्री जी और प्रदेश के मुख्यमंत्री उनको साधवाद देते हैं आर करस्पॉन्डेंट रिपोर्ट दैट दिस विल बी दर्ड इंटरनेशनल एयरपोर्ट इन उत्तर प्रदेश the new kushinagar international airport is going to play an important role in the development of purvanchal region people in the city are quite excited about the opening of the airport and believe that it will give boost to the tourism industry here avinash garg a hotel owner in kushinagar told air इससे प्रभाव ये पड़ेगा कि जो सैलानी हैं जो बाहर के विदेशी जो हैं कुछ साधन की असुविधा के कारण नहीं आ पाते थे उनका आना अब आसान हो जाएगा और इस एयरपोर्ट के माध्यम से लगभग सभी बौद्ध सर्किटों को जोड़ा जा रहा है जिसमें से कुशी नगर भी एक हिस्सा है इससे रोजगार के भी अवसर मिलेंगे द टूरिज्म बूस्ट विल इंक्रीज अदर सर्विस प्रोवाइडर्स बिसाइड गिविंग इंटरनेशनल प्लेटफॉर्म एंड मार्केट टू द लोकल प्रोडक्ट लाइक टेराकोटा काला नमक राइस बनाना फाइबर प्रोडक्ट्स हु आर बीइंग इंकरेज बाय स्टेट गवर्नमेंट अंडर इट्स ओडीओपी वन डिस्ट्रिक्ट वन प्रोडक्ट स्कीम विद डॉक्टर विवेक पांडे इन कुशीनगर दिस इज सुशील चंद्र तिवारी एआईआर न्यूज लखनऊ इंडिया इज एडमिनिस्टर्ड ओवर 97 करोड़ 79 लाख डोजेस ऑफ कोविड वैक्सीन सो फार अंडर द नेशन वाइड वैक्सीनेशन ड्राइव यूनियन हेल्थ मिनिस्ट्री सेड मोर देन 12 लाख 5000 वैक्सीन डोजेस वर एडमिनिस्टर्ड इन द लास्ट 24 आवर्स The ministry said 19,582 COVID patients recovered during the last 24 hours and the national recovery rate has reached 98.12%. The country reported 13,596 new cases in the last 24 hours. Currently, India's active case load is around 1,89,000. India and Israel have agreed to resume negotiations on free trade agreement next month. Briefing media after talks with Israeli Foreign Minister Yair Lapid, External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jai Shankar said talks will start in November 
and expressed confidence that negotiations would be concluded by June next year. Both ministers discussed a wide range of regional and global issues. They agreed in principle on mutual recognition of COVID vaccination certification. Another issue on which we have been working on is, of course, how to travel in this COVID era. So I know that in principle we have agreed on mutual recognition of our, our vaccine certification process. And while we are working that out in the interim, Israel would allow people with COVID shield vaccines to travel to Israel. I'm also very happy at the inauguration of the Women in STEM mini conference on November 24, where women scientists from both sides. Dr. Jay Shankar also welcomed Israel as the newest member of the International Solar Alliance. Over 56.62 lakh metric tons of paddy has been procured in Kharif's marketing season 2021-22 up to 17th of this month. The procurement took place in states and union territories. The Kharif marketing season 2021-22 at MSP commenced recently and has benefited 3,71,919 farmers with MSP value of over 11,000 crore rupees. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh today stated that as a responsible maritime stakeholder, India supports consensus-based principles and a peaceful, open, rule-based and stable world order. He said India envisions Indian Ocean region with the universal values of rule-based freedom of navigation and free trade in which the interests of all participating countries are protected. The minister was addressing the naval commanders during the inaugural session of second edition of Naval Commanders Conference of 2021. The conference was attended by all operational and area commanders of the Indian Navy to review major operational, material, logistics, human resource development, training and administrative activities. Mr. Singh said, the geographical location of India is unique in many ways and it is very important from the point of view of strategic, trade and resources. He said there is a greater need to maintain peace and stability within the Indian maritime zones in order to boost the trade and economic activities. He stressed that the Indian Navy's role in ensuring maintenance of this peace and stability in the region is going to increase manifold in the time to come. Minister of Civil Aviation Jyoti Raditya Sindhya today virtually flagged off six routes expanding the aerial connectivity of northeast India. These routes are Kolkata to Guwahati, Guwahati to Aizol, Aizol to Shillong, Shillong to Aizol, Aizol to Guwahati, and Guwahati to Kolkata. Minister of Civil Aviation has said that flight connectivity on these routes was long pending demand of the natives of the regions. Speaking on the occasion, Mr. Sindhya said that only six airports were operational in Northeast in 2014, which has grown to 15 airports in a short span of seven years. He said that this further highlights the due importance of the Northeastern states for this government. The minister added that under the Krishi Uran Yojana, 16 airports have been identified to enhance export opportunities of the region. In and Home Minister Amit Shah today held a meeting with Directors, Generals of Police and Inspectors General of Police of all the states and union territories as well as the Chiefs of Central Armed Police Forces. During the meeting, Mr. Shah reviewed the security situation in the country with them. Sources said the security situation in the union territory of Jammu and Kashmir was also discussed during the meeting. Former head of Dera Sacha Sada Gurmeet Ram Rahim Singh and four others have been sentenced to life imprisonment after conviction in 2002 Ranjit Singh Dera Sirsa's manager's murder case. The four other convicts are Krishan Lal, Jasbir Singh, Avdar Singh and Sabdal. A sixth accused in the case died a year ago. The judge of special CBI court in Panchkula, Haryana, Sushil Kumar Garg also pronounced a fine of 30 lakh rupees under section 302 and 1 lakh rupees under section 506 to Gurmeet. The other four co-accused were also fined by the court besides life imprisonment. 50% of this amount will go to Ranjit Singh's family. Earlier this month, the special CBI court in Haryana's Panchkula found all five guilty. Gurmeet Singh, who has been lodged in Sanaria Jail in Rohatak district since his 2017 conviction for the rape of two followers appeared through video conferencing. The others were present in the court. Ranjit Singh, who was the manager and also a follower of the sect, was shot dead in 2002. 
Apart from the 20-year sentence for the rape handed down in 2017, Gurmeet Singh has also been given another life term for the murder of journalist Ram Chandar Chhatrapati. The UIDAI will host Aadhaar Hackathon 2021 from 28 to 31st of October. The hackathon is targeted at young innovators who are still at various engineering institutes and eager to step into the real world. The second theme of the hackathon is around the identity and authentication solution offered by the UIDAI. Under this scheme, the UIDAI is soliciting innovative solutions to prove identity without sharing the Aadhaar number or any demographics information. Also, it is looking for innovative applications around face authentication API, the newly launched authentication modality of the UIDAI. BJP President JP Nadda has lauded the work done by party workers during the COVID-19 pandemic. Inaugurating the BJP National Office Bearers Meeting this morning at party headquarters in New Delhi, Mr. Nadda stressed on the need to stay relevant in changing times. He said change is constant and an ongoing process and only those succeed in politics who stay relevant. He accused the opposition parties of creating hurdles in the development works undertaken by the Narendra Modi government. Union Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan has said that education should ensure employability. He was speaking at the signing ceremony of an MOU between AICTE and IOSR, Institute of Uriya Studies and Research, to introduce engineering education in Uriya medium in Bhubaneswar today. More from a Bhubaneswar correspondent. Underlining the importance of language in education, the Union Minister said that one of the important recommendations of the national education policy is the mother tongue based education. Citing examples of developed nations, Mr. Pradhan said that these countries have always given importance to their own language. He said that critical thinking flourishes through one's mother tongue. In the context of celebrating the completion of 100 years of Odisha as the first linguistic state in the country in 2036, the minister underlined the importance of nutrition, language, education and employment. Girish Chandra Das, AIR News, Bhuvaneshwar. You are listening to the Evening News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Relief and rescue operations and full swing in heavy rain affected Kerala. Centre assures all help. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh says, as a responsible maritime stakeholder, India supports consensus-based principles and a peaceful, open, rule-based and stable world order. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to inaugurate Kushinagar International Airport on Wednesday. Civil Aviation Minister Jyoti Raditya Sindhya virtually flags off six routes expanding aerial connectivity in northeast region. India and Israel agree to resume negotiations on free trade agreement next month. Over 56.62 lakh metric tons of paddy procured in current Kharif marketing season so far. Over 97 crore 79 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses administered in the country so far. Recovery rate is at 98.12%. Former head of Deira Satcha Sada Gurmeet Ram Rahim and four others get life imprisonment in a 2002 murder case. Sensex and Nifty hit fresh record high. And in Cricket T20 World Cup, India take on England in first warm-up match in Dubai. For quick news updates from the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alert. स्वतंत्रता संग्राम में अनगिनत स्वतंत्रता सेनानियों ने अपने प्राणों की आहुति दी कुछ इतिहास में अमर हो गए और कई गुमनाम आजादी के अमृत महोत्सव के अंतर्गत 75 कड़ियों की श्रृंखला में हम उन वीरांगनाओं की बात करेंगे जिनका योगदान कभी भुलाया नहीं जा सकता प्रत्येक मंगलवार परिक्रमा में सुनिए अपराजिता देश की वीरांगनाओं को आकाशवाणी का सादर नमन Welcome back. You're listening to the Evening News. Vice President M. Venkanaidu has greeted all the citizens on the eve of Milad-un-Nabi, 
Mr. Naidu said that the Holy Prophet showed humanity the righteous path of compassion, tolerance and universal brotherhood. Mr. Naidu hoped that Prophet Muhammad's eternal message continues to guide us in building a just, humane and harmonious society. In news just in, India's COVID-19 vaccination coverage has crossed 98 crore 60 lakh landmark milestone today. Out of the total vaccination, more than 69 crore 87 lakh vaccine doses have been given as first dose, while over 28 crore 72 lakh doses have been administered as second dose. Union Health Ministry said more than 79 lakh 74,000 vaccine doses were administered today. As our nation celebrates the 75th year of independence, a series of events are being organized by the government as a part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. Let's listen to our special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News India's glorious fight for freedom is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed. AIR News brings you a glimpse of the valiant struggle every day. In today's episode, we will talk about Ramakrishna Khatri. October is the death anniversary of Ramakrishna Khatri. He was born in Buldhana district of Maharashtra in 1902. During his student life, Khatri was influenced by Bal Gangadhar Tilak. He established the Udasin Mandal, where he was known as Mahant Govind Prakash. Ramakrishna Khatri joined the Hindustan Republic Association and was given the task to spread the association in Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh by Ram Prasad Bismil. After the Kakori robbery, Ramakrishna Khatri was arrested from Pune and was jailed in Lucknow. After the trial, he was sentenced to 10 years of imprisonment for his involvement in the Kakori robbery. When Khatri was released from jail, he immediately started efforts to release other inmates from the jail. It was because of the efforts of Ramakrishna Khatri that a memorial to freedom fighters could be built at Kakori. Ramakrishna Khatri was also a prolific writer. His book named Shaheedon Ki Chaya was published from Nagpur. He also wrote the book Kakori Shaheed Smriti. <laughs> Narayan Dutt Tiwari was born on the 18th of October 1925 in the village of Baluti, located in Nainital district of Uttarakhand. His initiation into politics came early, when during the Indian independence movement, he was arrested on the 14th of December 1942 for writing anti-British leaflets opposing imperialist policies and sent to Nainital jail where his father was already lodged. Upon his release after 15 months in 1944, he enrolled at the Allahabad University, where he topped the university in MA Political Science. He continued his education with an LLB from the same university and was elected as the President of the Students' Union of the Allahabad University in 1947. In the first election for the Uttar Pradesh Legislative Assembly held in 1952, he was elected from Nainital constituency. He became the Minister for Finance and Parliamentary Affairs in the Chaudhary Charan Singh government. Tiwari was the Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh three times. In the central government, Tiwari served as the Minister of Industries, Minister of Petroleum, External Affairs Minister and Minister of Finance and Commerce. He also served as the first Chief Minister of Uttarakhand which was carved out of Uttar Pradesh from 2002 till 2007. Narayan Dutt Tiwari also served as Governor of Andhra Pradesh. He passed away on his birthday, that is 18th of October, in the year 2018. 
दैट ड्रिंग्स अस टू द एंड ऑफ दिस एपिसोड ऑफ आजादी का सफर ए आई आर न्यूज के संग सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट एपिसोड टूमोरो At the stock markets, key indices posted its fresh record closing highs today, but the rupee fell nine paise against the dollar. A report from the Business World. The stock markets rising for the sixth straight session. Sensex at the Bombay Stock Exchange climbed 460 points to end at another all-time high of 61,766 today. Nifty at the National Stock Exchange advanced 139 points to a fresh record high of 18,477. At the forex market, the rupee depreciated nine paise to 75 rupees and 34 paise against the dollar. Gold gained 37 rupees to 46,306 rupees. per 10 grams at Delhi's bullion market and in the international market Brent crude oil futures moved up 59 cents to trade at 84.45 dollars a barrel this is Lalema Aneja Dang for AIR News Former US Secretary of State Colin Powell has died from complications from COVID-19 he was 84 the retired four star general and former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff who served four president President's made his reputation as a man of honor, distant from the political fray, an asset in the corridors of power. Powell was an American war hero who became the U.S. Secretary of State under the George W. Bush administration. In the men's T20 Cricket World Cup, England were 159 for four in 17.4 overs in the first warm-up match against India at Dubai International Stadium. The men in blue won the toss and opted to field. India's second practice match will be against Australia on the 20th of this month at the same venue at 3:30 p.m. Indian time. Meanwhile, Ireland defeated the Netherlands by seven wickets in the third match of the first round Group A at Sheikh Zayed Stadium, Abu Dhabi, this evening. Ireland overhauled the target of 107 runs in 15.1 overs. In another qualifier match at the same venue, Namibia were 85 for six in 15.6 overs against Sri Lanka when reports last came in. Earlier, Sri Lanka won the toss and elected to bowl. All India Radio will broadcast ball-by-ball -ball commentary of the ICC Men's T20 World Cup from the 23rd of this month. Now, let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital Delhi will have mist in the morning. The temperature will vary between 20 and 29 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have partly cloudy sky. The minimum temperature will be 25 degree, and the maximum is expected to be around 33 degrees. Chennai is expected to have generally cloudy sky with light rain. The temperature will vary between 27 and 33 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have generally cloudy sky. The city will observe a minimum temperature of 24 degrees and maximum of around 29. Srinagar will have mainly clear sky, becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. Temperature will hover between 7 and 20 degrees Celsius. Jammu will have mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature will be 19 and the maximum will be around 32 degrees. Leh is likely to witness generally cloudy sky with light rain. The minimum temperature will be 16, and the maximum, the minimum temperature will be 3, and the maximum will be 16. Gilgit will have partly cloudy sky. The temperature will hover between 8 and 25 degrees Celsius. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again: relief and rescue operations in full swing in heavy rain affected Kerala. Centre assures all help. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh says, as a responsible maritime stakeholder, India supports consensus-based principles and a peaceful, open, rule-based, and stable world order. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to inaugurate Kushinagar International Airport on Wednesday. Civil Aviation Minister Jyoti Raditya Sindhya virtually flags off six routes expanding aerial connectivity in northeast region. India and Israel agree to resume negotiations on free trade agreement next month. Over 56.62 lakh metric tons of paddy procured in current Kharif marketing season so far. Over 98 crore 60 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses administered in the country so far. Recovery rate is at 98.12 percent. Former head of Dera Satcha Soda, Gurmeet Ram Rahim, and four others get life imprisonment in a 2002 murder case. Sensex and Nifty hit fresh record high. And in Cricket T20 World Cup, India take on England in the first warm-up match in Dubai. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.